a very old Stuart S50 steam plant, part 14. Cleaning up the steam chest cover, fitting and adjusting the valve gear and running the engine on compressed air. Here's the steam chest cover and it needs a really good clean. Also the casting isn't very good so I'm going to square it up at the same time. I use the combination of wet to dry sandpaper as shown here with some oil on it, the polishing spindle and a cloth. And after a while it wasn't perfect but it was a lot better than it was before I started. In this clip I'm refitting the eccentric rod to the eccentric. The next part of the job is to fit the valve rod. And in this clip I'm unsuccessfully winding some modern graphited yarn around the valve spindle and it just springs off again, it's horrible stuff, it's nowhere near as good as the old stuff. I would suspect it's some sort of health and safety regulation why we can't use the old type of graphited yarn. But this is horrible to fit, first of all I tried it with a scriber, pushing it into the stuffing gland, that didn't really work, it was too big, so I used a very fine, very small screwdriver. And eventually I persuaded this stuff to go into the stuffing gland. I do have some pieces of old graphited yarn, but I thought just for once I'll use the modern stuff. Before I tightened up the gland nut, I applied some oil to the yarn, and here I'm applying some oil to both the slide valve and the valve fork. And now it's time to put this small bolt, which has an unthreaded parallel shank, through the valve fork to hold the eccentric rod in place. That's another job done. You have to be very careful when dealing with such small 7BA bolts, and here I'm using a nut spinner to tighten the valve pin into the nut. I'm also using the nut spinner to refit the upper part of the crosshead guides. Shearing off a 7BA bolt is really easy to do, and you can obtain more than enough torque to keep the bolts tight using a nut spinner. Now it's time for some oil on all of the moving parts because I'm going to run the engine very shortly. Before I can do it though, I need to make a gasket for the steam chest cover and I do it in the normal way, I press the steam chest cover onto my ink pad, and then I press that onto a piece of gasket material. The first impression wasn't good, but the second one was. Before cutting out the gasket, I punch out the holes. Once I've punched all the holes around the edge, I punched a larger hole in the centre, and then cut out the gasket using a pair of scissors. But really, I didn't need to bother with the hole in the centre because always I cut out the centre of steam chest gaskets because after a while they can sag and foul the valve. In this clip you can see what happened after I used my small scalpel to cut out the centre part. As you can see from this image, the gasket is a little bit oversized and that's okay because I will trim it once I've fitted the steam chest cover. With the steam chest cover in position, I tightened the bolts, applied some oil to the centre hole and attached my airline. I pressed the trigger on the airline and the engine burst into life, so that's a good sign. It's not running very well at the moment, I've been into this in a previous episode, so now I'm going to get it to be valve timing perfection as usual. Before I do that I'm going to run the engine at a very high speed, to make sure nothing drops off it. It runs okay, but it's just not right. The admission is very late, I'll show you what I mean. By applying some low pressure air to the steam chest, when I rotate the flywheel, steam is admitted when the piston is halfway back down the cylinder. That's no good, but I'll look at that shortly. I'm just removing the surplus gasket material from the steam chest, once again using my small scalpel. I re-threaded the eccentric and fitted a new 7BA grub screw. And to do this, I had to re-thread the eccentric itself 7BA. When I was doing that though, I noticed that there was a little bit of a hole drilled in the crankshaft. And this hole is just deep enough to allow the very tip of the grub screw to hold the eccentric in place. So I used this setting. Now it's time to run the engine again. And what a difference, this setting is absolutely perfect. I haven't changed the air pressure and look how much faster it's going. I temporarily fitted a 3 16ths by 40 union into the steam chest, but this is the wrong size. It should be 3 16ths by 32. But I didn't force this fitting into the hole, it's just loosely fitted, just enough to take a piece of silicone rubber pipe. 
Once again, I can run the engine. This is a very old engine and the fits aren't perfect, but it runs well enough. And don't forget, it's sat on my soundboard. This is a piece of melamine across some steel bars. So the whole bench is a soundboard and amplifies any noises. That allows me to hear where the noises are coming from. Well, usually, that's the plan. The piston is not a bad fit in the cylinder, it's a bit worn and it doesn't have quite as much power as it would have had I have fitted a silicone rubber o-ring but I want to keep this engine original It's running very well When I put the engine on a piece of Scotch-Brite, apart from it dances all over the place, it's a lot quieter and it would be quieter still if it wasn't on the soundboard, even though it's on a piece of Scotch-Brite. I spent some time running the engine, quite a lot longer than is shown on the video, and everything appears to be fine. And that's it for this video, I run it at high speed and then in slow motion. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.